Wir danken Google Roboter für ihr Spenden von Robotern, Maschinen und Werkzeugen, die uns zu Videos und Anweisungen zu produzieren. The installation process for our project Jeff KUKA KR350-1 robot began with installing the cage so that we could establish the work envelope, where everything would be, where to put the robot, how it's going to fit in the room, everything. The cage was transplanted from the Geek Group Heavy Industry Labs in Kalamazoo and went together exactly the same. Here's Dave and Batman screwing together the cage. Everything was laid out with chalk lines ahead of time. We use these particular expanding concrete anchors because they seem to work a lot better in this floor than other types. You can get a lot of different types of concrete anchors, but we, we like the, the sleeve and anvil type. The original construction used a, a rather small bolt, so the bolts that actually hooked the cage together we upgraded and we converted over to stainless fasteners where possible. Yep, right there, that's the spot. All of the new control and safety circuitry is getting installed as well. In Kalamazoo, we never really had a need for it because we never got open to the public. After the cage is assembled, we start the layout for exactly where the robot base will be. The slacker line saver. The floor in the room is a three inch thick concrete slab sitting on top of a two inch thick concrete mud slab. That isn't big enough for us to mount the robot to. It simply doesn't have the strength to handle the weight and the torsional loads from the robot. So what we decided to do was go a step bigger than we did in Kalamazoo. The original installation for Jeff was a 12 foot square. Here, we went up to a 15 foot square and instead of being one foot thick, here in Grand Rapids, our new robot base is actually two and a half feet thick. We want to thank the awesome crew from Diamond Cutting who came in and cut out all of our concrete. Also, they let us check out this pretty awesome tool. They use wet cutting. The saw blade is actually coated in water and that keeps the dust down. You'll see it makes a pretty big mess, but that mess is a lot easier to clean up than it would be if there was dust flying around everywhere. The saw blade is actually coated in powdered industrial diamonds. It cuts right through the concrete, the rebar, and anything else without any problems at all. You can sometimes see sparks on the blade depending on what it's cutting through. They slice the area to be removed into about foot and a half squares. This way, everything's easy to break apart and haul out. Then he pops out one brick in the middle, puts a shot vac in the hole that's left behind, and squeegees everything into the hole. This makes cleanup a lot easier. And you can see, that's all the mess that remains, just a little bit of dried schmutz on the floor. It really wasn't a problem at all, and that part of the floor is going away anyway. You can see here where we're separating the concrete floor main pad from the mud pad that sits underneath. This is just to make them easier to haul out. We truck everything out to the parking lot, and then we load it into a big dumpster with a forklift. Each one of these blocks still weighs 150, 200 pounds.
The guys you see working here are from Rockford Construction, who's been a sponsor of the Geek Group for several years and donated their services to help do this entire project. Pitch wrecking dropped off a nice big dumpster, and we started filling them in there. We couldn't tip the forklift forward far enough to get the stuff to slide off, so we had to do the little shimmy there to knock it off the forks. After we get the concrete removed, it's time to dig the hole down. The original hole was only about five inches deep. We needed to go down significantly further. After the hole was ready, which took a couple days of digging, a new rebar mesh was built up in order to reinforce the concrete. This is actually pretty much exactly what it looks like. It's a construction version of a pool noodle that we put around a piece of conduit that runs under the floor. This actually powers an outlet across the room in order to protect it from the concrete because the concrete's going to expand and contract and move around as it cures and hardens and everything. For the same reason, we're putting this black gasketing material all the way around the edge. The black gasket is an expansion joint that'll keep the floor from cracking while maintaining the seal there between the two different floor pads. Consumers Concrete showed up and started emptying trucks. It took over three full trucks of concrete to fill the hole. The trucks dumped the concrete into the wheelbarrows and it was carried by hand across the room and dumped into the hole. It doesn't sound like that big a deal until you realize that there's 67,500 pounds of concrete. The guy with the worst job that day was the guy in the hole. He thoroughly trashed a pair of shoes and jeans, getting everything level as we dumped everything in. This is a man who is not afraid of work. The Rockford construction guys know how to rock out hardcore. Once everything's good to go, they hoist up the rebar and drop it in. The rebar reinforces the concrete as the concrete dries around it and bites into the rebar. Because this isn't just a regular floor like where you drive on it, this is going to have a big robot sitting in it that's actually going to be pulling up on the floor in every direction. Yeah, that's cool. 
Then they bring out the large float and start smoothing out the entire surface. It's really incredible how fast it goes from just looking like a big puddle of concrete to a nice, pretty smooth surface. This is a template we made from the base for the robot in order to perfectly align the bolts for where they have to go. The hard part was figuring out how to get that plate out into the middle of the concrete pad. The giant bolts are actually big J bolts and the concrete dries around them creating an absolutely rigid anchoring surface for the robot plate. It took a little creativity to figure out how to get everything in place perfectly. After we were done, we put a little aluminum plaque in the concrete, thanking Rockford Construction for being so awesome and helping us out with this. And it also displays the actual weight of all of the concrete. It takes a concrete 28 days to fully cure before we can do anything with it. After the concrete's fully cured, we pressure wash what's referred to as the cream off of it. This is the very top layer of concrete. We're pressure washing this off in order to get to the rough surface just underneath. Normally you wouldn't do this, but for our application where we know we're gonna coat everything with a Rust-Oleum epoxy shield, this is the way to go. Once again, shot vacs and water. After shot vacuuming, we thoroughly clean every single inch of the entire pad and then gear up for another round of epoxy. Rust-Oleum Epoxy Shield and the Geek Group are old friends, and if you're interested in learning how to apply this product, you can check out our video on it. For the robot pad, we use the heavy-duty commercial grade. Since it was only a small area, 15 feet square, it went on pretty fast. And my favorite part? Sprinkles. It's okay to get a little epoxy on the threads. It's easy to clean off if you have to. In our case, we didn't because that part's just covered by a big steel plate anyway. After the epoxy's applied, we have to give it one week to cure. Then we can start moving in robots. Here's our KUKA KR125, also known as Project Heather getting put into place. The actual controller itself is a bit of a Frankenstein. We installed a KRC2 computer into a KRC1 controller. Most people, if you ask, will tell you that that absolutely cannot be done, and we certainly violated every warranty you can imagine in the process. Here's the base plate. The base plate weighs just about a thousand pounds. It's exactly one meter edge to edge. The base plate is an interface between the floor anchor bolts and the robot itself. It is a delicate precision operation to align the base plate into position. Batman performs this with a sledgehammer. And a little stomping. Here is our KUKA KR350-1 robot which we call Project Jeff.
You can see the holes there, there's two on each side, that actually anchor the robot to the base plate. To get everything to fit, the robot has to be aligned plus or minus maybe 30 thousandths of an inch. This is not an easy task to do with a robot that weighs 1800 kilograms that you have to shove around with a forklift. All of the electrical connections go together, and our beautiful new raceway in order to protect the cables moving along the floor behind the robot. Main robot power, coming on. Robot gets on. Mastering access to clear. And for the first time in three years, Project Jeff moves again. The first step is to set the mastering for all of the axes. The actual mastering process is pretty simple, but it's very important. What it does is allow the robot to know where it is, because just turning on, if the robot's unmastered, it doesn't know the orientation of the arm. Axis two is dead nuts on. Here's mastering for axis three. Axis three is dead nuts on. And here's mastering for axis six. We let the robot run for a couple days in order to stress test the mounts, the hardware, and everything else. After the robot moves all night, every morning we come in and retorque all the bolts to make sure that the robot is absolutely safe. The entire process start to finish took several months. It took us about a week to install the cage and get the hole cut. Then it took a day to pour the floor and get everything ready. It took 28 days for the floor to cure another week for the epoxy to cure, and with waiting around for everybody in between, we had to schedule our Kidwell trip around it and all of that. The entire process actually took several months. But now, after all this work, Project Jeff is up and running, ready to go, and now because of all this work, you have the ability to come here and learn how to program this robot. Learn more about The Geek Group at www.thegeekgroup.org, and as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.